Welcome back to Web Development from Scratch. This is episode 14, and my name is Jeffrey Way. And today we're going to be taking a look at list items and how to modify the default type. So let's move over to Espresso, and I will create an unordered list. And within it, I'll have a list item that says Hello World. And that's all we're doing here. So if I click Preview, now you can see that the default type for this list item is a disk. We can modify this though. We can even use custom images. This time, rather than creating an external style sheet, which is the best practice and what you should do in your projects, when you're working on simple demos, you can place your styling at the top of the page like so. And you can reference that it should be treated as styling by creating a style element. Now, we can add CSS as we always would. I'll begin by using a list item selector, and we will set the list style type and you'll see that here are our options by default it is disk but if we want to do a square we can add that one and you'll see that that's now been updated we can also use some more odd ones like lower roman and this will be smart enough to understand what item you're at so if i add another one it knows to do ii and then iii then iv like so so that's very helpful also, you can do a circle, and this will be hollow in the middle. Let's take a look at a few more of these. Decimal leading zero. So as you can see, there's lots of foreign types. Now note that in addition to list style type, you can also use the more simple list style, and that's going to essentially be the same. But what happens if you want to use a symbol that isn't built in? For example, let's say you want an arrow or a dash. Well, you can't type dash. That's not going to have an effect at all. You can do circle, and that's built in, but dash or arrow is not. In this case, we can use custom background images. Now, the way to do that is to specify URL and then pass a path to where the image is stored relative to that file. Here, we can see that I've created a file called dash, and it's called bg.gif. We'll do that now, bg.gif. And notice that now has updated. Now what you'll find though, is that most developers don't use this. They instead apply the image as a background. And the reason is, notice here how it's not perfectly lined up. That dash needs to be a little above it. But we don't really have a method to do that using this technique. So how about instead, we specify none for the list style, and we instead add that dash as a background image of the element. We'll do that right now. Background, and it's the same thing, URL bg.gif. Now, this does a few more things. A browser will take the background image and duplicate it for as wide as the container is. So for example, if I set the height to 500 pixels, that background dash is going to take up the entire area. But we can specify no, do not repeat by saying no repeat. And now you see we only end up with one. Lastly, we can also specify where this should be placed. The first parameter would be on the X axis and the second parameter will be the Y axis. So if we want to simply push that down the Y axis a little bit, we would either say zero around and that seems to work, or I could say zero on the left 10 pixels on the top, 20. Notice that pushes it off entirely if I zoom in. 10, bring it down to five, and we can simply work on it until we find exactly where we need. In this case, six pixels looks pretty good to me. But now, of course, that text is overflowing it. We need to add some padding to that text, and I'll do that right now. Padding left, and why don't we give it 20 pixels of padding that pushes that over. Now. This styling will be applied to every list item that we have, as you can see right there. And what's excellent is if you need to switch this out for a different background image, you only need to update one parameter. Now, we can even take things further if we're clever enough. For example, let's take a look at this web page, and this offers symbols that are not images, but you can use in your projects. So let's look at one we would like to do. How about check marks? If you click on it, that will immediately copy that symbol to your clipboard. So let's try to use that right here. Well, we don't have the option. We can't do anything like that. We can't say background. None of this will work. 
So we need a different method. Now, even list style, we can't do same thing. That's not gonna work. So we need to be clever. We're going to use the content pseudo element that we discussed in a previous lesson, li, and we want to add content before the list item because ultimately this is what we want. So while you could do something like this, and most beginners probably would, this is a bad practice. And the reason is, if you want to change that out, you would then have to change each one of these items and you're adding a check mark into the markup that's just not a smart move. Better to do it in your CSS file. So we will grab all list items and before it, we're going to add content. And what content are we adding? We're adding that check mark. Now what's excellent about these symbols is they're not images, so you can adjust the color. If you want these check marks to be blue, simply do blue. If you want to add some text shadow, which we haven't gone over just yet, you can still do it, and now these have a little bit of shadow. It's bound to all of the CSS that you're used to. Now, because we've applied content before, we don't need any padding. So now we've learned three different ways to specify how the symbols next to list items should appear.